In this video we are going to translate present, middle, passive indicative verbs. We are going to focus on this second uh, section of our Greek paradigm chart. So, let's begin. So, what is the middle passive voice? Here we have the screenshot from my video course, the link will be in the description box below. The voice shows the direction of the verb's action, so the active voice shows that the subject produces the action, so the action of the verb goes away from the subject to the direct object. The passive voice shows that uh, the subject receives the action of the verb, so it is passive, it's on the receiving end. And the middle voice shows again that the subject makes the action, but it will comes back to the subject itself and will benefit it in one way or another. So we also translate the middle voice actively with, um, with the idea that it will benefit uh, the subject. This is the paradigm for the present middle passive indicative verbs. This paradigm must be memorized. Someone mentioned that um, the red color is not really good against this background, so I brightened it. Uh, let me know if this red looks better. So uh, keep in mind that uh, these letters are connecting vowels between the stem and the ending. So the true endings here are my etai meta sten tai. These endings must be memorized. So whenever you see a Greek word in the text which has one of these endings, first of all, you know it is a verb. That word is a verb. It is a present verb and it's a middle passive present indicative verb. So now, depending on the ending, we will need to put them into the right person and uh, the number and translate them accordingly. Al erhetai hora kainun estin. So this is our verb erhetai, and this is a deponent. To learn more about deponents, refer to my video course. Uh, hora is our subject, and um, it's written in the lexical form. By the way, I made a video four ways how to find the Greek subject. Um, um, you can watch it here. So this is our subject, and um, so but uh, but uh, the hour. Erhetai, but the hour erhetai, and we see that this is the ending, third person singular, but the hour comes and now is. Another example with the same word which we just saw, erhetai ho Iesus eis hierosoluma. So this is our subject, Jesus, it's in the nominative case. So this is our verb, and uh, we can see it's um, third person singular and uh, the number matches our subject. Uh, this is very important. So, uh, Jesus comes into Jerusalem. Another example, ho de Iesus apakrinetai autois. So, but and ho Iesus is our subject. Again, it's in a nominative case. So, um, but Jesus apakrinetai, and we can see this is the third person singular ending. So it agrees with our subject in number, which is good. So, but Jesus answers them. Poreomai proston patera. So in this example, we have a verb and we have a prepositional phrase, which we can translate at any moment. Proston patera means um, to the father. And now we just have a verb. We don't have any subject written. Whenever we see a situation like that, we draw out the subject out of the verb. How do we do it? We look at the ending and we see the ending um, omai. We find it right here, so our subject will be I, first person singular, I. So now let's translate it. Poreomai, I come or I go, and we translate the whole thing as um, I am coming or I am going to the Father. A good example from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 12. Ek gar tu karpu to dendron ginosketai. For, and then we have a prepositional phrase, from the fruit. In English we would say by the fruit. To dendron, and this is our subject, uh, the tree, the tree ginosketai. It has the 
ending ete, which is the third person singular, so it agrees with our subject in number, which is perfect. So the three ginoskite, the middle voice will not work here, but the passive form will work here. So the tree is known by the fruit, for by the fruit the tree is known. Legusin auto dunametha. Legusin auto, they say to him dunametha. One word sentence, again there is no subject, we we'll look at the endings and the ending is metha, which we find right here. And um, because there is no subject, we draw the subject from the first person plural, we. So they say to him, we can or we are able. From dunamai, I can or I am able. So we are able or we can. Matthew chapter 7, pandendron me poyun, karpon kalon, ekoptetai, kai espur baletai. So pandendron, every tree not making, or in English we would say not producing or not bearing, karpon kalon, a good fruit, ekoptetai, kai espur, and uh, into fire, balete. So we have two verbs and uh, both of them share the same ending, uh, singular, third person singular, which agrees with our subject, every tree, this is our subject. So every tree not making or not producing a good uh, fruit. Um, Ecoptetai uh, is cut off and into fire is thrown. So the context here helps us to identify that, that these verbs are actually passive. So every tree which is not making a good fruit is cut off and into fire thrown or is thrown into fire. If you enjoyed this video and it helped you to learn, please hit the like button, comment below and subscribe. And remember, we are not just learning Greek grammar, we are getting closer to God. So I wish you all the best, learn Greek, love God, I'll see you in the next video.